What is and is not allowed to be a club at U of T? What regulations must groups abide by in order to gain official recognition by U of T? And furthermore, what constitutes a breach of guidelines? On August 24th, 2024, a Reddit user by the name of Fine Network posted to r slash U of T with the title, Issue with Student Life Recognizing Falun Gong Club Officially. They received dozens of comments and upvotes in a post objecting to U of T student life offering official recognition to this group. They pointed to multiple sources supporting their assertion that Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, holds values and practices that some in the university community may find objectionable, or even that creates reason to have their club status revoked. So the question that a lot of us now have is, well, what is Falun Dafa? Founded in 1992 by Li Hongzhi, Falun Dafa, which translates literally to Dharma Wheel Practice, is a spiritual group with roots in the much older practice of Qigong, along with Buddhist and Taoist elements. In 1990s China, the number of practitioners had a meteoric rise, and with it came an equally intense repression campaign by the Chinese government. Now operating out of a headquarters in New York State, Falun Dafa's influence has expanded through both performing arts and media, namely the traveling dance troupe Shen Yun and newspaper The Epoch Times, both of which have been subjects of ongoing controversy. The original author of the Reddit post and many commenters raised disagreement with U of T's decision to recognize this group on campus, but in order to understand this decision, we must understand the university's policy. In total, there are more than 1,000 different clubs, ranging from large student unions all the way down to more niche hobbies, like the Rubik's Cube and Puzzles Club. U of T has two main documents that prescribe the rules of club regulation, one being the policy on the recognition of student groups and the other being the tri-campus guidelines on the recognition of student groups. Let's break these down. A club can't be primarily engaged in selling things, should be open to all students, have at least five student members, activities must be legal, and if a club is directly connected to another body, it has to be explicitly disclosed. But beyond these core requirements, the university has a largely hands-off approach to clubs. In both of these documents, the administration states that they only interfere in situations that are illegal or infringe on the rights and freedoms specified in these documents. Because of this, clubs have a great deal of autonomy in what they are allowed to do and in what ideologies they are allowed to promote. But how does a club become a club? Well, it starts with a one-page application on the student organization portal. Beyond general information like a name, the application only requires two administrative officers, one executive, a constitution, and a mailing address. To make things even easier, U of T encourages students to use the constitution template that they provide. Then, a staff member reviews the application, and if approval is granted, the club is official. The Varsity was able to successfully reach out to the Fallen Dafa Club, but they declined to comment on this video citing safety concerns. What we know for certain about this club comes largely from their student organization portal and Instagram. Activities are primarily based around meditation and experience sharing sessions. Additionally, participation is non-obligatory. The emphasis on ease and accessibility exemplified in the university's policy suggests that the administration errs on the side of leniency when approving groups. This makes the Falun Dafa Club a fascinating case study of U of T policy put into practice.